Lucky stars align tonight Fate spins round like a dynamite Roll the dice, the future's bright Tune in now, it's luck time's light Every twist and every turn Fortune's wheel makes the tables turn Risks we take and let's Bad boys, bad boys what you gonna do? Ooh. What you gonna do when Lucky Time Explosion comes for you? Hey. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome. What's up? Happy hump or Friday. It's yeah. Friday. Oh my God. I don't even know what fucking day it is. We got to get out of here. Got to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> we'll go home soon. So but yeah. first, some art podcast nonsense. Uh, I've been looking at that. You know that um, Australian diamond miner lady? The richest lady on planet Earth. She's actually not the richest lady on Earth, planet Earth. And actually, that's kind of fucked up because she makes $1 million every 30 minutes. Oh, but she's not the world's richest woman? She's not the world's richest woman. So who she, the hell is? <laughs> she makes $1 million every 30 minutes. Um, and she's recently been in the did, news because... Did Bezos get a sex change? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, the, uh, the irony here is that this uh, woman like says she prefers her privacy. Um, and she's been kind of vocal though, and outspoken. Most late, most recently, uh, she had a um, portrait uh, donated, or as part of a important Australian people series of work at this museum. And the artist has kind of got an art brute style, mm. and so he has this very unflattering picture of her involved oh. in this like group of uh, different artists uh, or different important people in Australia. Here's a picture of the por portrait that is in the news because she wants it taken out of the museum, mm. as you can see why. <laughs> but I found something kind of funny on here. Uh, I have to find her. Gina Reinhardt is who we're talking about. There we go. Got her name. Gina up. Reinhardt. Gina Reinhardt is a mining heiress from Australia and a vocal critic of pretty much anything progressive or left leaning. And are not shiny. Yeah, she not likes shiny. diamonds. And I was reading this article today where she said that um, she she said that you know she couldn't get the portrait removed. They wouldn't remove it, and so someone was like, "Well, she's donated her own portrait." And technically, they actually donated this portrait in 2019, which was before this whole controversy took off. And they never showed it or accepted the gift, apparently because there's too many like strings attached. Like she's got too many like terms about showing it or giving it away. So they're like they've been in negotiation about this gifted portrait for a long time. And now she's after she's asked for it to be removed, they're, they're bringing this back up. But that's not the thing I want to read for you guys today. This is the funniest thing. So she had a poem uh, that she created and put on a monument. She like printed this shit out on a plaque and then got attached it to a giant boulder. And it's about her idea. Is the boulder supposed to represent her? Is she the boulder? <laughs> Maybe. It's, oh. like, it's like that uh, Melania Trump statue. My favorite. You remember that? They burned it down. I can't believe they burned it. it yeah, it's a, a shame. It I, I don't art brute care about her, but I care about that <laughs> statue. Yeah, that was a pretty amazing statue. But her, her idea, her big idea is to like split Australia in half. Like with a big knife? Yeah. Or a saw? With a special economic zone. Oh. So the special economic zone is not to be privy to all the taxes uh, that are ruining the mining industry, in her opinion, in Australia. She wants, and this is the cheeky part, she wants the miners to take a pay cut so they can be more competitive with like these miners who are getting $2 a day, you know, in Africa and stuff. And meanwhile, she's making a million dollars every 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So nice. it's like not really kind of nice, but you know, there's something to be said about regulation and taxes. I mean, after all, I am an American. We threw off all that tea in the par party. The whole point of this country was like, we don't want to pay taxes. Right. And we think uh, the idea is that we think that a uh, limited government and, and not taxing people helps everybody and makes, you know, capitalism work better when you let it more right. free. The less popular there was the tea party, but then there was the chocolate milk party. 
that didn't really make it as far. They were kind of more literal. They just stuck to basically saying that, you know, if you are a politician, you must drink chocolate milk. And if you don't, then you will be executed. It was a daily thing. They would watch each other and they would rat each other out. And this was a big problem. And oh eventually they were like, you know what? This this idea is crazy. This oh, you know chocolate what? milk thing. I think I have heard they of this. Ended it. I think I've heard of this. I think the uh, the special agents were called the bubbles, right? Right, and Washington almost flipped. Washington almost flipped. Dang. Yeah, he almost went to chocolate milk. Well, so glad he didn't. Yeah, me too. Uh, but I wanted to go read you guys this poem that is enshrined on a rock somewhere because I just found it interesting. Uh, so this poem goes, uh, oops, I fucked up sending it to myself on email and it cut off a good part. Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Well, I'll read what I did uh, get there. Uh, this type of direction is harmful to our core. Some envious, unthinking people have been conned to think prosperity is created by ma waving a magic wand. Through such unfortunate ignorance, too much abuse is hurled against miners, workers, and related industries who strive to build the world. Develop North Australia. Embrace multiculturalism and welcome short-term foreign workers to our shores to benefit from the export of our minerals and ores. The world's poor need our resources. Do not leave them to their fate. Our nation needs special economic zones, wise government, before it is too late. Boring. <laughs> Lady yeah. should be crushed by that rock. I know that sounds horrible. <laughs> Writing yeah, well, I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people would probably agree with you. Everyone's not too happy with her right now. Yeah, you know? me neither. For right now, I don't even know who she is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm appalled. That that makes me sick. Love love Skibbity Biden. That woman's rock. Not cool. <laughs> that's absurd. Yeah, that's the nine eleven of my brain. <laughs> right, because people were calling Skibbity Biden the nine eleven of television, which is bullshit. Yeah. And, 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 and they mean that in a good way. Oh no, we said his name somehow. We said his name. I hear him coming. Ah! No, not again. No. I, will. Why? I love him. Biden. I love Skibbity. <laughs> he makes me happy again. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I brought I brought a few things today. Yeah. Um, the reason that I uh, sang the cop song uh, is because I brought a few of my old um, tickets here. Ooh. Yeah. Your own personal citations i keep everything can i scan these and put them up or do of i have course. to like do i have to blur out information what year is this i can't even tell all right oh two we're going through um going through morgan's criminal rap sheet right today. this is in chester new york uh, located in orange county if you know where that is happened on main street mm -hmm. 2002 following too close what tailgating were you you were driving? I was actually driving, and I was following too close. Got a ticket for that. They let you drive a car? <clears throat> they did. I don't wow. remember what kind of car I had. It doesn't really matter. All right, moving so when's on the last to the car next. you had? Long time ago. Mm. So this this is part of a bigger problem right here. This is a unsafe lane passing on the Palisades. Uh, this turned into driving intoxicated. Uh, sorry, no, driving while impaired by drugs. I was not drunk. I was <laughs> oh, on no. what they call the marijuana. Oh, no, and you're what taking the was, weeds now. <clears throat> I was driving home in the Palisades from the mm. city a uh, long time ago. What year is this? This is 2004. And, um, you know, if you know the Palisades Parkway, there's no shoulder. It's a beautiful ride, but there's yeah. no shoulder. And I was coming around a curve, and a cop that had pulled someone over was pulling back into the Palisades and they did it really aggressively, like very quickly. And I had to make some maneuvers to be safe. Anyways, they thought that that meant that I was driving erratic, the mm. assholes. And then they pulled me over. I was with my uh, girlfriend at the time whose family is full of uh, Irish lawyers and they pulled me over and I, I immediately turned into Woody Allen. I was like, oh, uh, uh, hi, Miss, Mrs. Officer. And she's like, oh, hi. Yeah, you were driving a little bit erratically, you know. Oh, my goodness. Gone. I didn't know. And she's like, it smells a little like marijuana. I'm like, oh, really? That's funny. And then she, right between my legs, in my crotch, in a driver's seat. It's a giant bomb. There's a bowl. Oh, she sees the bowl. She sees it. She goes, what's that? And I didn't even hide. It wasn't even under my crotch. This is how sad it was. <laughs> 
He didn't and then they made me do the it. test, you know, walking around back and forth. And the whole time, my my girlfriend at the time was like, "You don't know who my father is. He's a high powered lawyer." And I'm like, <laughs> "Please, you're making it worse. You're making it worse." <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a fun experience to say the least. Did you tell him it was a tobacco pipe, like they they say in no, the stores? No, I said. Uh, I said I get really nervous when I'm driving through the city, and this helps me pay attention. I mean, that's probably true. Knowing it was you. true. Yeah, I believe you actually. And I thought I was drunk. <laughs> I had dr- drank that night, and I felt a little bit wacky. But I did the breathalyzer, and yeah. I passed. They actually have different um, in New Mexico. I know they have different um, penalties for driving under the influence of weed or drinking. Drinking is far worse. Don't do anything if you're driving. Stay sober, alert. You have yeah. a coffee. Be be don't a good do boy. What I did. Don't, don't do smoke. Don't weed be like and drive. Morgan. Jeez. Yeah, but they do recognize. That well, they it's gave like me two options. Thing. They said we could either, you know, take you in, or we can tickle you. And I said, just take me in. <laughs> you didn't want to get tickled that I day. I did not want to get tickled. This is another one. This is two thousand two. This is in, where is this Monroe? No, this is not Monroe. I don't know where this is. Oh, Chester again. Yeehaw. They know you out there. 2002, December 5th, pos- unlawful possession of marijuana. In my car, but I didn't get, they didn't give me a uh, driving while intoxicated. However, they did find weed. How do they keep on doing this? Wait, here's another one. <laughs> <sighs> Town of Warwick, May 24th, 2006. You should be in prison. This is a big stack. Unlawful possession of marijuana, Warwick, New York. Okay, this is a good story. Okay. And I wish I had the picture. I'm going to have to find it one day. And when I do, I mean, I couldn't even show it anyways. We'd have to blur it out. Anyways, I used to work for my dad doing uh, floor laying. And uh, there was a guy named Eric Mayfield who was a phenomenal illustrator artist. And he was able to draw caricatures of everyone that he worked with, like to the T. So he drew a picture of me standing up and this guy, Dennis Brown, on his knees next to my crotch. And he made it so that you can... Like it's a collage where you can take my pants off and I'd be standing there <laughs> holding my dick. So this was in a suitcase. This picture was in a suitcase in the back of my car. And when they pulled me over in Warwick, May 24th, 2006, you know, he was like, he took full advantage of my situation. You know, again, I turned into Woody Allen. Cops come, Woody Allen. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, can I check your trunk? I'm like, yeah, sure. So your tr- I know oh, was checking in my your trunk. trunk, you know, you know what he meant. He didn't really mean your actual trunk. I know he wanted well, to check that. I didn't booty want to give baby. it up. He wasn't very good looking. So, oh. um, so yeah, we open up and he's like, "What's this suitcase?" I'm like, "Oh, that's my suitcase. You can look in it if you want." And he opens it up and he takes the the illustration and he looks at it and he looks at me. I see him raise his hand to lift the pants on the illustration, oh, exposing yes. my penis, <laughs> and he puts it down. He looks at me again. He looks at the picture again and he starts cracking up. He realizes <laughs> this, this, this is me. This is a picture of me with my dick in my hands. And then he calls another backup cop just to come over and look at He goes, look at this kid. Look at the picture. Look at this kid. Look at the picture. <laughs> and this, the whole time, this was right after a gig at a place called Tuscan Cafe in yeah. Warwick, New York. All my friends were across the street at a gas station watching this whole thing go down. And then finally, they're like, listen, we're going to have to like impound your car, like your friends could take you home. And then they still ticketed me, those assholes, and they got a, uh, a great night. But collage saved your life then. Yeah. Thank you, Eric Mayfield. What's this? Oh, this is a good one. This is great. This is 2001. This is in SUNY Plattsburgh. I, w- I lived off campus, 102 Court Street. Excessive noise. Mm. Yo, I was rocking out. What hard. were you doing? 8.30 a.m., I was playing drums at 8.30 a.m. Jeez, you got no respect at all, do you? What the fuck was I doing playing drums at 8? You were probably still up from the night before. That's weird. Okay, one more. Well, a few more. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have a big rap sheet. It's I another didn't one. I have this many. The next year, SUNY, per, or, or, yeah, uh, sorry, Plattsburgh, excessive noise, 9.30 a.m. Why was I playing? What the fuck was I doing playing drums at 9.30? And what's this? Is this the Whoa, final one? That's a big one. This is a one. big one. Oh, yeah. No, this is when I got pulled over while driving while uh, impaired. Mm. DWAI drugs. Oh, my God. Again. It was the marijuana. You know, that's the actually the evilest gateway drug that there is. This person, first of all, had great handwriting, this cop. Yeah, for a cop, that's actually pretty good. All uh, capitals, like I like it. <laughs> now that weed is legal and like sold at every corner store, do you think... Mm. 
they bother with like driving on an under intoxicated on weed anymore? Unless unless the person's high and they're really driving like a fucking lunatic. I guess, I guess you have in to which really case, you know, if there's no alcohol in there, it might be pharmaceuticals or who yeah. the hell knows. But um yeah, those those were the days. I, I there are tickets that I don't even have here that I remember took place, like leaving Jeez. the Middletown Galleria Mall on seventeen got hit there because um I think we stole a cardboard cutout of like Britney Spears, threw it in a trunk, but the trunk wouldn't close. So <laughs> I was on the highway and all my friends were in the car. Britney Spears is just waving out the back. And uh, <laughs> the cop actually on the left, he's like, pull over. I'm like, oh shit. And, and crazy enough, dude, I was on the highway. I tried, I tried to pull over on the left. Yeah. Near oh, the no. divider, not the right. Yeah. Like a freaking mongoloid. Next thing <laughs> I know, he's like, he gets on the loudspeaker again. He's like, the other side, the other side Get of the, the highway. Side. I'm like sweating bullets. I'm like, oh my god! My friends are like, you're <laughs> pull over. My friend, um, this is a healthy stack. Yeah, that's a healthy stack. My my friend, uh, I won't na- mention his name. It doesn't really matter. But um, he had like individually wrapped grams of marijuana. So they took him. They took my friend uh, Dan. They threw. Uh, you know, they put him in handcuffs. Oh they, my god! They let the dog search the car. Yeah. And I had my guitar in um, the back. And he's like, you steal this too? I'm like, no, that's <laughs> oh my, my guitar. And uh, he opens it up. And he's like, I'm like, he's like, can I open it up? I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, oh, whatever, Fender. He's like, you should try playing a Les Paul. And oh. I was like, you should try sucking my peanuts. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, but I wanted to. I have a, I have a yeah, pulled over a, story. It was a fun day. Before I tell my pullover story, I want to say first, I don't get many tickets. I think I've gotten like one ticket in my life. And it's because of the suit, man. You got to start wearing a suit. Yeah, look at me. I'm like a the, the, someone that crawled out from under their bed. Yeah, you got to put the suit on. No matter who you are, <sighs> just wear a suit. You'll be fine. I'm joking. But, I use uh, reverse psychology. The more you look like a scumbag, the more shit, good shit will happen to you. That has I not happened yet. I don't know if that's yet. been working out for you. No, it has not been working out. Look at all out, these. I still believe in it. Hey, and don't put stickers on your car, kids. Yeah. You get a car... My dad always said, stickers attract the cops. You don't, why would you put a sticker on your oh, car? Oh, they, there's one sticker you should put on your car, um, which oh, is the, the, uh, the police. Pay, right, right, right. I police Federation, bro, you know, whatever. <coughs> put that on your car. That might help you out a little bit, actually. I be had like, one. Oh, you're one of us. I, and, and I got off a lot of times because my dad was friends with cop, and that's still how many tickets I have. But I never even told you what happened quickly, how I, I got off each and every single one of those uh, marijuana charges. Why? My dad was close friends with a state trooper who actually oh met me at every court appearance which is insane i don't know what my dad was doing for him on his side but it was like four tickets it was like warwick chester Damn. monroe and i think one in goshen quite possibly Wait, but what, how did he get County. it off he met me at every he knows the judge he just showed every up single at every town. single town uh, they're like hey, hey what's up michael like yeah he's like so what did this kid do he's like well, you got to go easy on him but uh, he's gonna learn his lesson right and i'm like yes mr officer of course i learned my lesson <laughs> and this guy met at every single four, four courts four different fucking towns within orange county nepotism and got me off every single look one look at that you know nepotism's not just in the art world is it it's a. Uh, that's my only only everywhere. nepo story. Yeah, that's your I, only nepo I'm story. A, my parents <laughs> didn't know how to deal with money for the life of them. Wait, check this out. I, I'm still holding your handful of tickets. Uh, listen, this is this is crime ASMR. I hope you hated that. Anyway, yeah. uh, I have one story coming here to New York. So I packed all my shit in my van. I had a um a school bus that I bought for a thousand dollars off a ska band. And what was I, the name of the ska band? I don't actually remember at all. I, I don't Fucking know if I even scar. remember. But they had, it was a white school bus with like, um, with checkers on the side. And, you know, I was coming to New York for the first time. I was like, I'm going to make my dreams happen. I threw all my paintings in the back of the ship. It had like checkered, like it was white with like checkers on the, on the side. You know, it's pretty awesome. Scar. And I was driving through like Chicago or Cincinnati. I can't remember which one. And a cop pulls me over on the highway and they basically were like, you were swerving or driving erratically. And I was like, oh, sorry, officer. I'm a new driver. And I was a new driver because I did not have a driver's license. And so I you're was saying driving you were across. driving a bus? This is the crime episode, by the way. This is just our That's, confession. That is pretty ballsy. So yeah, I well, wouldn't even do that. What happened was I, I bought this bus and I was planning to get my license. But something was, was happening. Was that your first? First car ever. The first, first only. car was a bus a school bus yeah it was a short Holy bus to be shit. fair like a I little think van there's too many people that could say that i also replaced the alternator on it before i ever actually drove it 
you know, I like to know how things work. But I, so I got this bus and I called the DMV and I'm like trying to set up an appointment for the driving test and the thing. And they go, okay, great. You passed the written test. All good. Uh, we're going to have a driving test for you in about nine months. And I was like, nine months? I was leaving in like five or six. You know, I was, leaving, so I was trying to take care of this. And apparently all the DMVs in California where I was were all under construction at once. And so I just couldn't, there was nothing I could do. I had to leave. Damn. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm going across country with a learner's permit. You know, I just kind of like, wow. And I went and um, speaking about talking your way out of stuff, I actually got stopped on the, uh, the dam. That was the big dam, the Hoover dam. Oh yeah. So I was going across the Hoover dam and my bus was a diesel bus that was running on uh, like vegetable oil. Right. So I was running this vegetable oil and I had big tanks of it in the back because I didn't want to buy gas. So I had all these huge things of vegetable oil and they were like, what is that? Like flammable? Like you can't take that across the bridge. We have a limit for how many, you we know, should have just told gallons. them I was pissed. So I, t- <laughs> so I told them I'm a piss collector. I go to state. <laughs> I, this to is state. one day. This bottle belongs to Barbara Wilkins. <laughs> she was one of the best. And then this is Davey TMO. <laughs> no. Davey had so, a medical problem. His brown. color is a little bit different. No, than I the rest told them. The what I told them was I told them it was vegetable oil. And it was technically fuel because it was like kind of refined for use in diesel engine. I don't know if you know this, listeners, but you can run a diesel engine off like Wesson vegetable oil from the grocery store. If you just go pour that, pour that in your gas tank, it will work. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know this is one hack. But uh, the guy stopped me and said, you know, you're way over the limit. And I said, uh, you know, it's vegetable oil. And I just like talked my way out of uh, carrying way too many dangerous flammable explosives onto a dam. So the uh, safety Damn. is an illusion. You know, the world is <laughs> the world is an illusion. There's no such thing as also, safety. the world is a vampire. But I also got pulled Billy over. But yeah. Right. But I actually got pulled over, like I was saying, in Chicago. And the cop, I think he just saw the California plates and he saw a rainbow blanket hanging out the back. And he was like, these I'm going to get these guys like a drug bust. So he pulled me over and he told me I was driving weird. I said, well, that's because I'm a new driver. And I handed him my permit uh, from California. He just like squinted at it. And then he put me in the back of his cruiser in like that tiny little cell, you know, the little like plexiglass cell. Uh, and he's in there and he goes, um, when's the last time you and your girlfriend did drugs? Uh, and I looked at him like, I thought you said I was swerving, you know? And then he's like, don't be smart with me or whatever. I was like, I was like, I just thought about it. And I just said, uh, I have smoked copious amounts of marijuana in California, but never in your fine state and never in this here vehicle, sir. <laughs> and they were like, they just squinted, looked at me all angry and totally let me go. I wasn't even driving with a license. They just let me go. Let me go my way because I'm a sovereign citizen. They were impeding my ability to travel. I'm just kidding. But yeah, that was my story coming to New York uh, to make it as an artist with my brush with the law. But I've only gotten one ticket for like um, trying to not jump the turnstile, but like go in the open door. Which I never do. I always pay my fare, actually. I think and I get mad really, when people there's, there's jump a, when I pay it. I have a little bit of a problem with the turnstiles. Yeah. Like, I guess they would say that the average height of uh, an American man is somewhere around like 5'9". Yeah. I'm 5'9". But whenever I go through the turnstile, it hits me in my dick. Like, perfect. Square on. Perfect dick shot. And I think that's kind of unfair. Yeah. Like, why can't they just raise them a little bit? For, for If, if, if I, the average is 5'9", then why is this the joke? Is this the MTA joke that they want to just watch people with glee <laughs> walking through the turnstiles, getting battered in their groins, oh my coming God. home with bruises and marks? You got to explain this to your girlfriend. You're like, oh, it's the turnstile. She's like, you fucking lie. Why are you <laughs> son of she son of a bitch? The I'm MTA like, is doing I'm it like, to me, not me. I don't know what to tell you. Now you're telling me you know a girl named Turnstile. <laughs> oh, Turnstile! Everyone's had a turn. Ouch. Yeah. Right in the Oof. peppy. That, but yeah, that was my story. I came here on my school bus doing that, and uh, yeah, I've never really, I've, I've been fortunate. I don't know. Did you ever make love on the school bus? Maybe. Nice. It had a bed. Uh, we had like a lofted bed. It was all built out. It was nice. I actually had a solar panel on the roof that charged an array of batteries, like car batteries. So that was enough juice to like charge my laptop, my phone, my wireless internet thing, uh, lights. I and feel like the story that you're telling should take place in the future, not like in the past. It sounds it like the past. in the future you will have this school bus again and maybe you'll be riding with the jugs and going over dams and then, you know, quite possibly at that point trying to blow them up. Yeah, but like now I've but, grown up a little bit of like a married man in the Upper East Side. I can't get a school bus. Trust me. 
I tried. She said no. Well, when the missiles hit New York City and, uh, you know, and <laughs> some of us are spared and there just happens to be a working school bus right outside your building, uh, it looks like you have no choice. Hey, you know, I'm ready. I'm Morgan Damas. I uh, could see these things happening. I'm ready. When the pandemic hit, I just spent all my time practicing archery so I can kill squirrels. And, right. That's and important. Live. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what you have to do when you're in that show alone. You go out there, you shoot those little critters, and you got to nibble on their little bones. And that's, that's all true. you got. Yeah. Oh, we should plug, um, we should plug uh, Kathleen's show again. It's oh, coming yes. up. She's next a phenomenal Tuesday. artist. Yep. Next Tuesday. You'll so be missing out. Check out the Solus Instagram, Solus Studio NYC, uh, and click on the pin story to get an RSVP invite to Conscious Dust. Yeah. Kathleen and you can Krowlick. see posted a bunch of her work so you yeah. can see in the last few posts her work which is absolutely phenomenal so i'll put my favorite one up here right now that um that group of like uh, pink cats that's out. my favorite too it's such a good work it's, it's such a good painting. very awesome yeah. if i had lots of money i'd be like <laughs> hey i'm going to purchase that piece of art <laughs> <laughs> would you say it like that probably. hello i have lots of money now i talk like this i'd probably be more drunk because i'm at an event <laughs> I've, I've slowed down with the alcohol, and now I'm drinking uh, this. Uh, That's good. We're getting healthy, guys. Shit, he's getting. He's maybe not happy, but we're all happy for him. <laughs> I guess we're dragging him, kicking and screaming into the future. I had to punch myself three times before coming on air today. <laughs> yeah, we punched each other actually. We were yeah, just, we were just it felt fighting. Good. And just you gotta, you gotta let each out other. You gotta let it out every once in a while. Yeah, and I, you know, it's it's good for the skin. You never read about that. Yeah, I've done some research. It's healthy for your skin. If you just give yourself a few good wallops every morning, it not only does it wake you up, but it's good for your skin. I walloped on myself recently because I had not been doing my TikToks. Uh, I kind of like stopped for like a month and a half. You know how many children were crying around the so world? So many waiting? children, 50,000 like, children Brandon? crying, we waiting for me. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Little but Timmy, we don't know when Brandon's going to be back. I, I know it used to be so frequent, but... Uh, uh, how am I supposed to live? I thought that. Um, <laughs> how do I go I, on? Shut up. <laughs> you can't crack me up. Uh, but I did. Uh, I feel like it's kind of a thing that artists struggle with sometimes. Like, you know, I've had a mentor of mine tell me that, uh, you know, I'm I've always doing great stuff. I'm all but I'm all over the place and I don't stick with one thing enough and really like hold it out. And I was like, fuck, you're right, dude. Like, I really need to. So TikTok was kind of one of the first things that I really stuck with and, like, tried to do it every day for a really long time. I did and what for is the account? How could they find you? It's just called Wise Carver, at Wise Carver. What I do there is I do, like, art history lessons, basically, while painting in virtual reality, trying to merge the past with the future and give a little more context to uh, modern art and contemporary art that a lot of people think is just stupid or a scam. You know what? After this episode... Yeah. Attach one of your episodes to give them a little taste. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's only yeah. a couple of minutes. It's three minutes long. So if you're listening all the way through, you can see uh, at the end of this episode, I'll play my latest uh, video about Eve's climb. Now, I do know a lot about art history, but I do also do them kind of fast. So if I ever say anything wrong, uh, I would love to be corrected. I feel like a lot of art history goes by uh, different accounts and say so anyway, and myths and born or legends. And I do try to do my diligence and, and make sure I'm not perpetrating anything that's inaccurate but what i was going to say about that was that like i feel like artists have a tendency to sort of like self-sabotage sometimes like i feel like you know we can be like afraid of success and not want to put ourselves uh, through the grind that we know we need to do it because as soon as i got a bunch of followers on tiktok i was like that's good bye i'm gonna go try something i'm gonna go start a podcast with morgan you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean? Here we are, and we're but we're holding through on this as well. Yeah. What's the name of that park that we're close to? Madison Square Park. Madison Square Park. It's That's park. sad. So I, I heard there they people have been reporting seeing some guy with a pink wig and a furry vest walking around with a sign that says "Listen to Lucky Time Explosion Podcast." And I wonder I who gotta, that is. I got to meet this guy, and I I just want to say thank you to that guy who's doing that and you may see him around Madison Square Park I mean what a trooper he was handing out stickers too so you know whatever I was how like, do you get our thing. stickers I don't know I don't know I think he just went ahead and made his own he was like sticker mule or something maybe he works for the sticker place and he's just such know. a big fan that he had to steal our stickers he's cute and run around. He was pretty cute, especially cute. in that way. A little bit of a stomach on him, but uh, he's cute nonetheless. So, yeah, if you're around there, you may see him. He may be handing out stickers, take some pictures <laughs> with him, make you laugh. 
Get some All stickers. Strange shit. But don't forget to check out our Patreon. Things yeah. are happening. Yep. It's been updated. We swear. Now is the time. And yeah. in the future, we will have T-shirts. We will have pins. We will have whatever you want. You let us know. As yeah. long as you sign up to the Patreon. So check that out. Follow us. Comment. Do what you got to do. Yeah, and if you have any artists in New York that you want to come on the show, let us know. We love talking to them, and we have some really, really exciting guests yeah, coming up next week. Yeah, tag some people. Tag some people in the comments. If you have artist friends, let them know about this. Share it. But we do have some artists. We have Rob Cantrell, the comedian. We have Swoon coming up. Big week. It's going to be awesome. Please stay tuned, yeah. everybody. We love you very much. Thank you much for watching and listening, uh, and we will see you guys next week. Hasta la pasta. Here's my video. The painter of space wasn't a fan of actually going there, nor was he really a painter. Hello friends, welcome back to my painting VR studio. Yves Klein was born in 1928 in Nice, France, to a family of successful artists but never received formal training as one. Rather, he would find his way to painting as one of many means to express a singular idea and a personal obsession, the infinite. The story goes, as a young man, he and three friends were laying on a beach and staring into the sky when they decided to split the universe up between the three of them, as one did before phones and TikTok. One of the friends claimed all material things, the other claimed language and words, and our boy Eves was left with the void, or the space between things. And like his own personal Big Bang, this moment would expand beyond comprehension to define his work and his artistic legacy thereafter. However, an artistic legacy may not have been his first choice. Klein preferred judo and began his pursuit of art only after some major failures pursuing that original passion. Klein's most famous works are his blue paintings using his own signature color, IKB or International Klein Blue. Their canvas is coated in a textural application of his favorite blue pigment, suspended in a specially designed medium. They were about as well received by the New York art world of the time as they would be by that kid who keeps commenting, that's not art, on my posts here. He's sometimes lumped in as like a California artist because his work had more in common with the coming light and space movement out there than it did with the New York minimalists of the time. He is remembered as the painter of space because he certainly wasn't painting, well, anything, but instead was sticking to his allotment of the void from that day on the beach. You may roll your eyes at his pure blue canvases, but there's a reason his legacy continues on to this day in products like Culture Hustle's version of IKB, or the Zima Blue episode of Love, Death, and Robots. Not bad for someone who died of a heart attack at 34. Klein was working with big ideas and a monochromatic palette of his own making during a time when the world was already knee-deep in redefining what it means to paint. When I was younger, I was on a field trip to MoMA before I knew anything about this artist or his ideas and I got stuck standing in front of one of his blue canvases. The pigment is extremely vibrant, and it really does feel like getting sucked into the void to view in person. I would call him a conceptual artist. He didn't just paint stuff blue, but created his own fake newspaper to disseminate his radical views on the nature of immateriality and the void. This early composite photograph was groundbreaking for its time, and now one of the most famous photos in fine art. It's meant to symbolize himself as the artist leaping into the void. But later, he also stated that it was a protest of the space race, leading me to believe that Lucky stars align to light Fate spins round like a dynamite Roll the dice, the future's bright Tune in now, it's luck time's light Every twist and every turn Fortune's wheel makes the tables shine Risks we take and lessons learn Listen close as stories burn Love time explosion, feel the rush Podcast brings that golden touch Every tale unfolds in trust Luck is here for all of us
Feel the 